Please remain standing. I publish the bands of marriage between Manuel Camargue, widower of this parish, and Dinah Baxter Sternhold, widow of the parish of St. Mary Forby. This is the third time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. Do we know each other? Uh, no, no. Uh, of course I know you. Oh. It's just that my daughter Sylvia was at school with your... with Dinah. Ah, uh, was she? Oh, I don't think they were great friends or anything. Well, I must get to Dinah to ring her. Well, she doesn't live too far away. Uh, do you have her telephone number? I will write it down for you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you could come to the house sometimes for dinner. Oh, that would be wonderful. Well, I don't want Dinah to lose contact with her friends. I would like to wish you both great happiness. Thank you very much. Not so many of them think in the same way. I mean, the looks that they were giving me. But... Take no notice. <laughs> you are absolutely right. <laughs> well, goodbye. Thank you very much. But you never told me your name. Uh... Dora Wexford. Oh, Dora. <laughs> Thank you, Dora. <laughs> goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. There you are, Sir Manuel. I put a rug in the back since it's got a bit chilly. What a nice chef you have, thank you. Yeah. Uh. Well, the church was called like a refrigerator. <laughs> Let's hope it warms up before the wedding. How did it go, sir? Well, no one knew any cause uh, or just impediment. <laughs> Always wondered what would happen if someone did say something. Well, you sit there wondering if they will. Really? It's a most peculiar feeling, yeah. Miss Dinah couldn't be with you. No, not today. The jam factory. Thank your pardon, sir. That's how Dinah goes to the house. The jam factory? Uh -huh. Sometimes uh, the shoebox. <laughs> Guess who I met today? Mm hmm? Sir Manuel Camargue. Mm. In church. Yeah. Well, outside the church. Actually, we heard him once at the Wigmore Hall. It was 30 years ago. 
Mozart. He was playing Mozart. He's getting married. What? Well, he must be over 70. Sylvia was at school with a girl he's marrying. He's marrying a girl of Sylvia's age. Well, why not? Well, he must be 20 years older than me. <sighs> he's got nothing to do with age. Well, what has he got to do with her? Well, if she loves him. Well, I can't understand a woman throwing away her youth. He is a very charismatic man. And he's very kind. How do you know? Oh, people say, people who know him. Oh, yeah. He's invited us to dinner. Well, I couldn't go. Why not? I'd be embarrassed. Sometimes you make me so mad. Can I get you anything else, sir? Oh, uh, yes, a bigger stomach. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Yes? Were they well and truly called? Uh, for the last time, my darling. Oh, who was there? Mrs. Last? Yes. The Camerons? Yes, and the mother of a friend of yours. Of mine? Uh, from school. Who? Sylvia Vexford. Oh, yes, of course. Her parents live in Kings Markham. I must ring her. Uh, she gave me the number. I have to go now. Mrs. X will never forgive me if my lunch gets cold. No. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, darling. I love you. Oh, I love you, too. How is she, sir? Getting excited. Bless her. Mm. Mm. Great. I could talk to you all night. Oh, I'll bring the rest of the presents tomorrow. Mm, more presents? My uncle, who's my godfather, brought us silver pastry forks. People are very generous, huh? Yes, particularly as it's the second time round for both of us. Yeah. Manuel? Yes? Have you heard any more from Natalie? You mean this woman? No. You know, you're quite wrong about her. I saw her, Dinah. Not you. But to take the step of even thinking of changing your will without trying to... I don't want to discuss it again. Eh? I only want what's best for you. I should have told the police. Okay, that's enough for the moment. Eh? Okay, Nancy, come. Good. Be a good girl. Come on. Come on. Here, here. Here, here, here. Sit. Slowly, slowly. It's your... Come on. Uh, Nancy, where are you? Nancy. Hey, wait for me. Where are you? Nancy. Nancy.
Casey! Nancy. Where are you, Nancy? Nancy! Nancy! Where are you, Nancy? Where? Sylvia? It's a bit sad. I didn't know him at all, but I can't help crying. Is that silly? No. He was an old man. Yes, I know, but... Three school years and ten. <laughs> Just before his wet. Well, he shouldn't have gone chasing out that dog of his. <sighs> Is it true he fell in the lake? Apparently. There was this tremendous obituary programme for him on the television. Yeah, I just got the end of it. Yeah, I... Oh, poor Dinah. She lost her first husband, you know, and now this. I'll go and see her. I'll call her first thing in the morning. Well, I'd leave it for a day or two if I were you. Why? There's going to be an inquest first thing in the morning. Inquest? Well, surely he died a perfectly natural death. Well, you can't call drowning natural. I mean, he didn't do it on purpose. No. And no one did it to him? No. Well, then... There's always an inquest after a sudden death. What will the verdict be? Misadventure. Can I express my sympathy with Sir Manuel's daughter in her loss and grief, which is no less a personal one for being shared with the tens of thousands who have been inspired by his music. I would not be exceeding my duty by quoting Samuel Johnson. It matters not how a man dies, but how he has lived. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Arnold, can I ask you a few questions, please? Sure. Uh, you just returned from America. Mm -hmm. How long have you been living there? Um, about 20 years. Okay, and what's your relationship with Miss Sternhold? She was to be my stepmother. Where have you been? I went to the inquest. What for? Well, there wasn't much going on. Everything to your liking, I hope, my dear. Very good. What is that? You being chicken with rice roux and zorro. Well, I'll have that then. Right, my dear. I think you were wise to do that. Well, you said it was good. No, no, no. I, I meant going to the inquest. Why? Well, people might start to think there was something suspicious about the death. Oh. I know Kamara died of uh, misadventure. Anyway, nobody recognize me.
That was a musical tribute to the late Emmanuel Camargue, who died last week. You just had a call from the Camargue house. Time to tell you about the series of it's broken into last night. I'd like to go up there. There's no need for that. Martin can handle it. Don't you have any curiosity to see the home of our former most distinguished citizen? Come on. Chief Inspector Wexford and uh, Inspector Burton. And come in, please. Your other man is through here. Thank you. Can I get you a cup of tea? Oh, no, thank you. No. Inspector Burton? No, me, thank you. Then you must excuse me. I have things to do. Back to Wexford. I'm Natalie Arno. Sir Manuel's daughter. Please accept my condolences. I, I didn't know that you were here. Now you do. I hear you've had a break in. Yes. Downstairs. Didn't Mrs. Hicks show you? Well, I uh, I like to see the whole house. I see. Well, thank you for coming so quickly. I might be making a big fuss about nothing. Well, tell me all you can tell me. It's not much. It must have been around five this morning. I thought I heard the sound of breaking glass. I didn't go downstairs. Well, to be honest, I was uh, just a little scared. But uh, I did look out the window, and there was a van parked. I took the number of the registration. Uh, I have it here somewhere. Oh, hi. This is Chief Inspector Wexford. These are my friends, the Zophanies. Yeah. He's uh, come to find our burglar. I didn't know what to do. And then I heard the van start up and drive off, and I went down to the dining room and found the window broken. Well, pity you didn't phone us then. Well, it was only half a dozen silver spoons and two five-pound notes from my purse. Well, you didn't know that then? No, I didn't. Mrs. Hicks took me around this morning. Strange. What? All those uh, wonderful objects, the pictures and the porcelain. Yeah, I know. I know. I find it hard to understand. Unless. Unless? Unless he was a silver spoon and five pound note burglar. <laughs> this is Mrs. Murray Burgess. She's a neighbor. Uh, Chief Inspector Wexford, Mrs. Murray Burgess. How do you do? I saw a man in the grounds here. Not last night. A few nights before. I mentioned it to Mr. Hicks. What night? Well, I can't recall precisely. Did you see anything this morning? I saw the lights of a vehicle pulling out from Sterry's by the back entrance. That's past my house. What time was that? 5.30. Did you see the driver? No. At all? No. Not a glimpse? No. What sort of a vehicle was it? 
a transit. New or old? Neither. Is there anything about it that uh, could help us? One of its back doors was dented. Thank you. Emmanuel Camargue wasn't just a musician, he was music. Hello, Mike. Hello, Dora. Can I have a word? Dora, do you mind waiting in the car? They traced that van to a television engineer from Finsbury Park in London, who lent it to his flatmate, a man called John Cooper. Anything? Two of Camargue's spoons in his cutlery drawer. Yeah. Well, it was an invitation to do the place. All that stuff about valuable paintings and china. And so you gleaned the information. In fact, it was very obvious from the newspaper cuttings. After the death of Sir Manuel. Well, they didn't draw a map or anything, but they said the place was empty, all closed up. I didn't have to get a shot when the light came on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Unless, Mr. Browning, it can be proved that our esteemed tabloids have incited your client to indulge in this petty theft, I suggest we accept your plea of guilty. Thank you, Your Worship. And set a date at the Crown Court for this case to be heard. 23rd of December, Myringham Crown Court number 4 at 11 a.m. Bail set at £5,000. Next case, please. Reg, it's that friend of Sylvia's, the one she was at school with, Dinah. Well, why don't she go and see Sylvia at home? Oh, it isn't Sylvia she wants to see, it's you. Oh. She's in the sitting room. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Wexford. I wouldn't be here unless it were absolutely vital. I can't sleep with the worry. Well, would you like a drink? Oh, yes, please. Uh, what? Whiskey. Water? Oh, neat, please. Oh, uh, do sit down. Thank you. Now then. I knew I ought to tell someone about this as soon as Miss Manuel was dead. I thought of the solicitors, but then I imagined them listening to me, thinking, since I wasn't inheriting, I was troublemaking. And it seemed so wild to go to the police. I don't really believe it myself. I can't. It seems so, well, so outlandish. But Manuel believed it. He was so sure. Perhaps you'd better tell me what all this is about. Manuel told me that Natalie Arno 
was not his daughter. He was absolutely convinced she was an imposter. She came on the 19th, about three. The Hickses went out, took the dog with them. Muriel had left tea prepared for them on the table, so they were quite alone. He told me he intended to be rather cool and distant with her. But when he went down and opened the front door, he just took her in his arms and held her. He talked and talked. He couldn't hear everything, as you probably know, he was partially deaf. And then he took her over the house. He loved to do that. They came to the gold flute, and she said, you still have the Pazzini flute. And it was at this point he said he knew, he knew for certain that she wasn't Natalie. I'm sorry, I, I don't follow you. It was the way she pronounced it. It should have been Pazzini. She pronounced it Pazzini. And the real Natalie spoke perfect Italian. He taught her. Well, surely there must be something more than that. Well, there was. He studied her. And then he could see that she wasn't his daughter. Her features were different. The colour of her eyes was different. He went back into the drawing room with her and he said, You are not my daughter, are you? He asked her. And she admitted it. Are you sure? He's a very old man. Failing eyesight, partially deaf, overwrought. I'm telling you what he said. The way he said it, Mr Wexford. He said he was going to cut her out of his will. I tried to dissuade him. Listen. He arranged for his solicitor to come to Steris two days after our wedding. He wouldn't go to the police or confide to his solicitor? That was my fault. I thought maybe he was imagining most of it. That it would cause a scandal and he would have hated that. I thought somehow once we were married, we could all meet and it would turn out to be some sort of misunderstanding. There was over a week between his daughter's visit and his death. And during that week, he wrote to me and phoned me. No, this extraordinary tale of Mrs. Steinholt, is it? If it were true, he would have said something about it, surely. He seems to have said nothing to anybody except his fiancée. Some people like making trouble. Yes. If uh, Mrs. Arno doesn't inherit, who would? No, oh, I don't think there's much risk of that, do you, really? Just the same. Who would? Sir Manuel had, has, I suppose I should say, if one can use the present tense in connection with the dead, Sir Manuel has a niece in France, his dead sister's daughter, a Mademoiselle Thérèse something, La Lour, La Croix. No doubt I could find the name if you really wanted it. Do you intend to accept Natalie Arno as the heir without investigation? But heavens, whatever gave you that idea? No, in view of what you told me, I shall make the most thorough and exhaustive inquiries. No doubt you will, too. No doubt. This is all now. She's left. Straight after the service. Well, when will she be back? No idea. She didn't say. Did she leave an address? No. What's going to happen then? House going to be sold? Both will be, sir. The gatehouse. See, he, uh, he gave it to us. God knows what it's worth now. I remember as though it was yesterday he said, uh, if you're good enough to come and work for me, then you deserve a house of your own to live in. There weren't many like him. What's that? It's um, antipasto and coli. Oh. I didn't know they had shrimps in Uganda. What will you have to start with, my dear? Well, I'll have the red peppers up with prawns. A very wise choice. Mm, it's like something over Sydney Green Street film. Sydney Green Street? The fat man in the multi. Talking of Hollywood, 
I've been on to the police in California. Ask them to let us have whatever they can on Natalie Arno. Well, if she hasn't been in trouble, there won't be much. Ah, now, Kamark's wife had a sister who's alive and still in London. Oh, immediate family, that's good. And have you ever heard of a composer called Philip Corey? Yes. Well, he was an old pal of Kamark's. Either or both of them should be able to tell us that this is the real Natalie. Well, that raises the question, doesn't it? Did Kamark die a natural death? Who she is, is everything. Mrs. Arno introduced us. Oh, yes. May I have a word with you? Come on. Take care of things for a moment, would you, Michelle? This way. Hey, darling, you remember Inspector Wexford, don't you? Mrs. Zoffany? Please, Inspector. Thank you. How long have you known Mrs. Arno? A couple of years. You knew her in May? Yes. Uh, my sister, Tina, shared a house with her in Los Angeles. And my sister died. I had to go over. What is all this about? Your sister shared a house with Mrs. Arno. Tina had a flat in her house. A room, actually. Does it matter? Look, can you tell me why you want to know? Your sister must have been a very young woman. 39. She died. Cancer. She had cancer. Did you ever stay in the house? Yes. How did you get on with Mrs. Arno? We became good friends. And when you came back here, you wrote to each other? Yes. And when Mrs. Arno was coming to London, had nowhere to stay, you offered her the flat upstairs. Why are you asking all these questions? A suggestion has been made that Mrs. Arno is not who she says she is. What? Isn't who she says she is. Not Sir Manuel Camargue's daughter. An imposter. That's the most incredible nonsense. Who suggested this? Nonsense or not, I have to make the necessary inquiries. As if she didn't have enough to put up with. She's got the patience of it. It's not my patience that's in question. It's my identity. Isn't that right, Mr. Wexford? You don't think I am who I say I am? Are you? Who do you think I am? It's not here to find out. Well, you're an investigator. That's part of what I do. You're here to investigate. I'm here to find the truth. Do you want to investigate me? Yes. OK. Ask your questions. What were you doing on the night of September the 27th? The night my father died? Yes. Why? Just answer the question. You think I pushed him? Perhaps. That's a wicked thing to even think. Tell him. Tell him where we were. We were at a party. We were all at a party. I shall have to have the name and address of the people whose party it was. Yeah, of course. You disappointed? Disappointed? Well, you wanted to find me guilty of something. This raises something else, doesn't it? Did come out and die a natural death? Who she is, is everything. Mm -hmm.
Thank you so much, Miranda. Uh, Mr. Wexford, you said on the telephone you wanted to speak to me about my niece. Yes. Well, I don't want to even think about her. Why? By the way she treated her mother and poor Emmanuel. You see, my problem is that I have to establish that the woman who calls herself Natalie Arnold is Sir Manuel Camargue's daughter. Now, you're the nearest relative. If you would agree to see her in, in my presence, it would help me if you could tell me if she is who she says she is. Oh, I, I couldn't do that. I'm sorry. That is impossible. I don't want to see Natalie again. Have you got a photograph of your sister? Of course. She was only 45 when she died. Poor Manuel didn't know what to do with his grief. He sold the house that they had at Pomfret, and he built that awful house at King's Markham. He called it Sterry's. You see, Sterry's was the name of the village in Derbyshire where my mother and father had their country place. Kathleen and Manuel first met there. When your niece uh, first moved to America... I don't want to talk about her. Did Sir Manuel go there? Yes, but not to see her. Are you sure? He would have told me. I don't quite understand what the rift was between you. First, she ran away to America to get married. And she didn't even say goodbye. She broke her mother's heart. And then when her mother was dying, Manuel wrote to her again and again, begging her to come over. But she never replied. No, Mr. Wexford, my niece is cruel. She's a cruel, unfeeling girl. And violent, too. She even struck her mother once. Did you know that? <laughs> but worse than that, She's a nymphomaniac. It doesn't matter to her who the men are. Oh, it's too horrific to talk about. I, I want no part of her, Inspector. <laughs> Pazzini. I've just been to the solicitor. You see, she said Pazzini. I guess she spoke perfectly Italian because her father taught her. Birth certificate. Marriage certificate. American driving license with photograph. United States passport with older photograph. Letter from her father. She submitted all those to the solicitor? Yep, and he says that he's interviewed her exhaustively and got from her a number of facts about the Camargue family and her childhood, which are being verified. Well, that's our job. If there are any facts to be verified, we should be doing it. It is 20 years since you've seen her. That voice. I'd know that voice anywhere. Even with the accent. She talked about Shadows Hall Farm. When I was in service with them, we lived there for a while. No imposter could know what she knows. with her for three years. At the Royal College of Music? Yes. You shared a flat? I'd know her anywhere. There's no doubt in your mind? None. That she is not like a man? I don't know how anyone can doubt it. Manuel told me that Natalie Arno was not his daughter. He was absolutely convinced she was an imposter. Mr. Bill around 
five this morning, I thought I heard the sound of breaking glass. Well, it was only a half a dozen silver spoons and two five-pound notes, I think. You don't think I am who I say I am? Well, that's very impressive. I don't have much time. All right, then you can have the hill, but you've got to promise to be very careful with it, hasn't he? Yes, he is. Listen, I'll go and get it here. There you are. See what your daddy can do with you then. Hey? Yes. <laughs> Magic, you see? They came to the gold flute, and she said, you still have the Pazzini flute. And it was at this point he said he knew, he knew for certain that she wasn't Natalie. I've had in my house. Uh, in any house I've ever lived in. <laughs> I feel guilty of something. I've taken two tranquilizers. <laughs> uh, do sit down. Oh, thank you. I um, explained on the phone. Mm -hmm. Little Natalie here. She was so kind and considerate to me at poor Manuel's memorial service. I, I should never have known she wasn't his daughter. Oh, she may be. I thought you said... We're trying to establish it, one way or the other. How? I'd like uh, you to ask her some questions. That would be embarrassing. But you'll do it. If it will help. One violin. You didn't tell me that Jenny played the violin. Oh, yes, she used to be with the Pilgrim String Quartet. Oh. She said we could borrow her hill if we were very careful with it. Yeah. All right. Her hill. Hill? Yes, it's a well known maker violin. Isn't it? Mr. Corey! Oh, how nice to see you. Are you in London now? No, down in the same old place. Oh, you've come to see Natalie. Is it Natalie? Well, it couldn't be anyone else. There you are. Well, I've already told him. Mrs. Woodhouse would know as well as I would. After all, she brought her up. Yes, well, shall we go in then? Goodbye, sir. Oh, goodbye. I'm quite willing to do my duty as a citizen. But I should be quite frank with you, Mr. Wilson. Uncle Philip, good to see you. I only wish the circumstances were different.
happened when you were five? We went to live on a farm. What was it called? Shadows Hall Farm. What did I buy you for your sixth birthday? A kitten. What color? Gray. What sort of a kitten was it? What sort? What breed, I told you. British Blue. Why did I buy it for you? Because my own cat had been run over. And what did you call it? Panther. Loves the house? On the Pomfret to Cheriton Road. first instrument you learned to play? The recorder. And who was your teacher? Oh, it was Bilston. How old were you when you began to play the violin? Eight. And who was your first master? No, I can't remember. What was strange about him? Strange? Well, you used to talk about it. His eyes were different colors. When you were 15, on holiday from school, your father had just come back from a tour of America. Canada. New York. No, nope. Toronto. Uh, do you remember a night I came to dinner? I hadn't seen you for a long time. Oh, yes. And what did I do? Oh, God, you asked me to play. <laughs> And what did you play? I played Bach. Yes. The Chaconne from the D minor partita. Yes. I played it badly. Yes. But you all clapped. Yes. <laughs> Shall we have a drink? If she wasn't Natalie, there's no way she could know about that piece of music. That is Natalie Kamar, without question. Would you play that piece of music for us? The Bach Chacon? I don't think so. You don't play the violin anymore? I'm out of practice. Well, we'll make allowances. I haven't played in years. If you play the violin, to satisfy Mr. Corey. Oh, is this necessary, Wexford? I shall be satisfied that Sir Manuel Kamara made a mistake. She cut her fingers. She broke a glass. Deliberately. It could have been an accident. Do you believe that? I don't know. But then I don't have your obsession. It is an obsession. And it's affecting your judgment. Everybody says she's Natalie Arno, and she's not. Then you must prove it. I can't. I can't. I can't prove it. If you can't prove it, then she is Natalie Arno. Have I missed something, Mike? Not that I know. Well, she won't get away with it. No. No, she won't. more to say. I have. May I come in? Why don't you leave the poor girl alone? 
Are you aware how serious this is? All I know is what I know. Murder could be involved. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you mean. May I sit down? Why did you go and see Mrs. Arnold? She asked me. Did she? Oh, why shouldn't I? I've known her since she was a kitty. <laughs> it was me that brought her up as much as a mother. How many times have you seen her? When? Recently. Twice in the past week. Not in July when she came over to this country? No. Not in August? No. When did you see her first? Two weeks ago, when that solicitor came asking questions. And uh, what questions did uh, Mrs. Arno ask? We just talked. She didn't ask you any questions? Oh, she might have. Like the name of her kitten or where her father went on tour? Oh, why shouldn't I tell her? Do you understand what a conspiracy means? She'd forgotten. A conspiracy to defraud someone of what is theirs by right of law. I was just reminding her. See, this could get you into a lot of trouble. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes? Mr. Ames. Ah, Mr. Ames. Uh, stay with you, Mike. I thought I'd come over straight away. Oh, sounds urgent. Not urgent, but significant. This won't take long. This will, of course, be sent to you officially in writing. Simmons, O'Brien and Ames have decided to recognize Mrs. Natalie Kathleen Carmark Arno as Sir Manuel Carmark's rightful heir. Quite simply, you're wrong. We look upon Mrs. Sternhold's accusations as malicious and indeed, at best, mischief-making and at worst, slanderous. I thought maybe he was imagining most of it, that it would cause a scandal and he would have hated that. I thought somehow once we were married, we could all meet, it would turn out to be some sort of misunderstanding. much. I mean, except as my husband. I thought, I thought that's all he was to her. I, <laughs> I thought it was me. I, I thought she liked me for myself. Natalie, she was back at the house. I did everything for her. <laughs> I bent over backwards to make her feel at home. She took all that from me and all the time, she and I even were. She doesn't want him. She wants him in love with her. She wants him on a string. He told me. His own wife. He, he, he told me. He didn't know how he could go on living because another woman doesn't want him. Started in America and... When I told her what he said, she said, I'm sorry, darling, but I didn't know you then. She said that to me. I didn't know you then. Look, look, let me take you back. I can't go back there. I can't fix. Well, let me take you... No. Leave me alone.
America. You can't go to America. That's where I'll find her. It's over. Is it? The case is closed. Well, then it'll have to be reopened. In America? Los Angeles. No, she won't be expecting that. Norval Freeborn. See, this web she's woven. You know what he's like. The subtlety of it. You know what he can be like. That's the only place I'll find out who she is. What do I say? I'm on holiday. Uh, my name is Waxford. I'm from England. I'm making inquiries about uh, Mrs. Arno. She's my cousin. I'm sorry, you've already moved here. You don't know That is funny. I mean, you're here, and she's in England. Oh, no. Afraid so. Well, perhaps you can help me. Uh, did you know Tina Zoffany? No. Hey, she virtually lived here. Come on in. Want a coffee? Thank you. So, how do you know Tina? I'm her uncle. Yeah. We met her brother once. Ivan. Yeah. I didn't like him one little bit, if you don't mind me saying so. I uh, wanted to meet uh, Mrs. Arno. I wanted to see where Tina lived her last. Yeah, she and my wife were real close. She's at uh, church with the kids. Yeah, you got to talk to her. She'll tell you everything about Tina. How'd you get on with Mrs. Arno? Yeah, as well as anybody could. Oh. What do you mean? Well, she's real private, you know? Anybody that knew her knew her on her terms. She was never the same twice. No, we like Tina much better. Tina's death must have been a shock to you. Yeah, we like to remember her as she lived. She was the opposite to Natalie. Warm, outgoing, fun. 
How comes that uh, Tina was living with Natalie? I don't know. I guess uh, Natalie needed some money after Ralph Ilbert moved out. Ralph Ilbert? Yeah, this married guy she was hanging around with. But it was Johnny that told Tina that Natalie had a room to rent. Johnny? Yeah, he was this other guy she had on the side. You know, like uh, a lover. Johnny Fassbender. He was, uh, I don't know, Swiss or something. Hey, listen, you gotta stick around till my wife gets back. She's got some great snapshots of Tina. Ah, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. you? Oh, my name is Waxford. I'm from England. Uh, Natalie Arnold, 440. Well, she's my cousin. Oh, yes. She went back home to visit her folks in London. Oh, no. Can you tell me how long you've lived here? About four years, I guess. Did you know her well? Hardly see her. She's almost a recluse. What about the uh, other people who lived in her house? Her rumors. Sure, we see them. They're always changing. There was this Swiss guy she had. He was living with her illegally. Well, I guess everyone knew it. But my husband being in the police department, well, he had to do what he had to do, you know? You mean uh, he had him deported? That's what I mean. so kind and considerate to me at poor Look upon Mrs. Stonehold's accusations as malicious. She doesn't love him. And indeed, at best, mischief-making. But she wants him in love with her. She wants him on the street. We became good friends. She's a... Slanderous. A nymphomaniac. Yeah, he was this merry guy she had on the side. You're disappointed? I'm Swiss or something. Yeah, you wanted to find me guilty of something. Got the number here, Dora. What's it called again? Shadow Marmont. A lot of interesting people have died here. Oh, dear, Rich, is it safe? <laughs> Don't you worry about me. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple of days. Must go now. Love you, Rich. Take care. Yeah, me too. Bye. Mrs. Davina Ilbert. Yeah? Uh, my name's uh, Chief Inspector Wexford from England. Inspector? Uh, I'm a policeman. Uh, yeah, what, what do you want? I'm uh, making inquiries about a case in which Mrs. Natalie Arno is concerned. I wonder if you'd mind answering me some questions. Listen, I don't care what you ask me about her, but uh, not over the phone, huh? Well, where then? <laughs>
When did your husband first meet Natalie? What? When did your husband first meet Natalie? Oh, that was in 86, yeah. 86. Have a towel. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, where was that? It was in San Francisco at some it was a cocktail party, yeah. Would you like a drink? Oh, thank you. down to L.A. Bought the house in Tuscarora for her. You lived there with her? He divided his time between me and her. God, I was so dumb in those days. <laughs> I trusted him. Well, when I did find out, I went over to Tuscarora and beat her up. <laughs> uh, Ralph came back, found her with two black eyes. God, he got so scared. He moved her up the coast for a while, get her away from me. Where did they stay, do you know? I think somewhere around the bay, maybe Point Doom, don't know. And what happened to them? <laughs> well, she got uh, tired of them, met somebody else. Ralphie was still crazy about her, but uh, he never saw her again after that trip. Never saw her again? No, she wouldn't. See him, speak to him. Then Ralph found out this guy she was with was living here illegally. <laughs> He had him deported. A Swiss called Fassbender. No, where'd you get that? No, it was, um, I don't recall exactly what his name was, but it wasn't what you said. No, he was, um, English. Ralph had him deported to England. <laughs> You. Well, I wonder if you can. Uh, I'm a police officer from England. Oh, England? Wow. Yes, I'm investigating a case. Uh, two people who stayed here about 1986. Uh, they would be registered under the name of either Arno or Hilbert. <laughs> Well, it's very kind of you to have looked. Inspector? Oh, thank you. Edith, dear. Now, you wanted to know about the girl who lived here. Well, stayed here. Well, she must have been here three months. We thought she'd go on renting the chalet forever. Uh, there was a, a man with her. He used to come and go in a Lincoln Continental. Hilbert? That's right. That was his name. I will say this for her, though. She never pretended. She never called herself Mrs. Hilbert. Couldn't care less what people thought. Is this her? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that's her. I guess that's her. It's kind of hard to say. She wore her hair loose. She had this terrific tan. One man wasn't enough for her. She was two-timing that Ilbert the minute he was off to L.A. There was this young fella hanging around. He used to play guitar at the Maison Suisse over in San Luis Obispo. She was crazy about him. He took her over completely. Why did she leave? We weren't here. We were in England. But Tom's cousin, who came over to run the place, said she was badly upset by a woman drowning here at Santa Xaverita. A young woman about her age. They knew each other. They were close. 
this uh, woman who drowned, do you know anything more about her? She was on holiday from the East, that's all. guy that she was with was living here illegally. He was two-time in that Ilbert the minute he was off. He was English. Ralph had him deported to England. She was badly upset by a woman drowning here. so warm in here. Cold. That's jet lag. I want you to get me the details of this. It's the death by drowning of a woman in California. Drowning? Yeah, Fred and Atlas. And? Nothing yet. Just a hunch. May take a few days. What's been going on here while I've been away? Jane Sophony has disappeared. Sophony didn't report her missing until she'd been gone a week. They'd quarrelled and she'd gone off. Yes, I know. I, uh, I saw her before I went to America. Oh. It should be taken seriously. I mean, he was very distraught. About Natalie. You spoke to her? I thought I'd leave that to you. Stuff it well. Moving out. You can't leave me alone, can you, Inspector? Yeah, we pack the breakables today, and tomorrow we pack the heavy stuff. So the house. I can wait for the right price. I'd like to talk to you about Jane Sophony. never came back to the house that night. Are you sure? Her stuff is still in the room she and Ivan used. Where could she have gone? I don't know. You must have some idea. Wish I did. Maybe she's in the lake. Why don't you drag it? Message for you from Interpol. The woman who drowned in Santa Saviorita was Tessa Lanchester, aged 30, unmarried, a paralegal secretary from Boston. The body was recovered after being in the sea for five days and identified a further four days later by her aunt, her parents both being dead. What is all this? Consider the possibility that the woman who drowned at Santa Xavarita 
was not Tessa Lanchester, but Natalie Arno. And then consider the possibility that the woman we are told is Natalie Arno Camard is, in fact, a paralegal secretary from Boston. I want that house turned inside out. Search warrant will take a few days. What? She's complained to headquarters, wants us off the property. Go on up to the house, and anything that wants taken apart up there, you take it apart. You're not going to find anything in this place. You tell that to James Offney. <laughs> Yes, they're going to work for Philip Corrie, Dave. I used to bring Nancy here every week. Ted loves her. Sylvia says you've been in California. Yes. Yes, I went over there in Ireland, eh? I think you went to find out if what Manuel thought was true. But you didn't find out, did you? Down here on the left. Twenty, sir. This is a serious matter. It is. A very serious matter. Is it much further? Frankly, I find it hard to believe. I imagine there's a chance you're wrong. A very good chance.
keys. I shall have to go back to the office to check in the book. Well, if you don't have them, we shall have to break it open. Your warrant doesn't say anything about breaking. I'd better find the keys, then. Let me try. I was wrong all along. She was Natalie Camargue. She got an idea into your head. You get obsessed with it. And the result is that somebody gets killed. You had nothing to do with her death. Whoever killed her killed her for what she was. So, what now? We find out who killed her and why. Mrs. Anna was going away on her holidays. She asked me to see to the moving on the second day. She had a chap staying. What? Who was he? I don't know. I didn't even see him. I heard them talking French. She laughed and said, your funny Swiss accent. Swiss? That's what she said, sir. That's an extraordinary thing. But Mrs. Arno simply followed in her father's footsteps. A week ago, we arranged to make a will, but she died before it could be drawn up. And she, too, was going to get married, you know? But she changed her mind. No, I didn't know. So the beneficiary is her cousin, Mademoiselle Therese Laramie. Do you want a precise address? I just hope we're in time. If he's there. Well, Natalie's been dead nine days, so he could have been there for eight days. We don't know if he's there. Only your ESP tells us that. How I don't know what he looks like. I do. How? So do you. Join the Hampshire Constabulary and see the world. We should enjoy it. Well, we can. Single girl. She's probably at work. Oh, well, that gives us a few hours. Now there's a cathedral. Joan of Arc Church, and apparently it's a very good art gallery. Ginny was telling me about them. Yeah? Well, let's get up there and have a look at her place, shall we? Let's see Mademoiselle. All right.
What if he has gone back to America or Switzerland? Oh, he wouldn't want to lose the money now, mate. This place would draw him like a magnet. And apparently he likes an heiress. But the heiress didn't like him. At the last moment, Natalie decided not to marry him. Yeah. He killed her for it. I think he's moved on to the next. Here she is. Mademoiselle Laramie, I believe that Mr. Ames has been in touch with you. Yes, he has. He told me about Natalie's death and about the inheritance. Miss Laramie, there's no easy way to say this. Um, but we believe that both your uncle, Sir Manuel Camargue, and Natalie were murdered. We are here to investigate these crimes. We would believe that they were both killed by the same man. Murdered. Please excuse me. Does he by any chance happen to play a guitar at the restaurant? Yes. Cher parmi tous ces visages, oh Thérèse, je t'aime. Je viendrai demain soir. Sans toi, c'est le vide, je sans aucune de passion. Je viendrai. Marry me, Thérèse. Everything is going too fast, I'm afraid. Fear can be a friend, believe me. Mr. Fastbender. Oh my God, it's Cooper. It's Cooper. It's Cooper. Don't even try. We found Natalie, Mr. Cooper. Or is it Johnny Fassbender? With your funny Swiss accent. Stay where you are. Don't come any closer. You, Mr. Cooper from London now, are you? You heard that Sir Manuel Camargo was going to change his will, leave all his money to his new wife. You were obsessed with that money, weren't you? Obsessed with Natalie. You wanted to make sure that she'd get it. So you killed the old man. I was in America. Oh, no, you weren't. We checked. He must have been galling for you. Knowing that you had to share it with Ivan Safany and Hilbert. Romero had you deported on your Swiss passport, but you came back. And then Hilbert had you deported on your English passport. Pity you didn't have any more passports. Why don't you let the lady go, Cooper? She's not Natalie. Nobody ever take the place of Natalie for you. Natalie and the money, wasn't it? But Natalie wouldn't marry a piece of rough like you. You stupid scum! While you were playing at the Maison Suisse, 
She was two time in you with Ilbert. Vous êtes Vous Must have driven you mad. Knowing that whatever you did, you could never possess her. Never possess her. Oh no. You can kill her. But you'd never forget Natalie. She's there with you forever. Betraying you forever. Betraying you forever. <laughs> I have to speak. I must speak to Inspector Wexford. I must speak to him now. It wasn't deliberate, just a mix-up. You see, the first appointment Natalie made with her father, she couldn't keep. She telephoned him. The second appointment, she wouldn't go. I went down to Sterry's for her, not as her. It was all a terrible misunderstanding. I didn't want to see the old man's feelings hurt. I didn't want to see him fobbed off with another phone call. It seemed kinder and more polite to go in person and explain. But he opened the door and put his arms round me and kissed me before I could speak. Yeah, I tried to tell him that there'd been a mistake, but he was deaf and carried away with emotion. Consequences of your silence have been devastating, haven't they? I was so confused. I played along with him while deciding what to do. It was so embarrassing. Embarrassment? Embarrassment prevented you from telling me that you had seen Camargue? You, and not Natalie? She sent me. She thought it would be amusing. Who do you think I am? That's what I'm here to find out. You're an investigator. That's part of what I do. You're here to investigate. I'm here to find the truth. <laughs>